Hi, I am Reza Tangisani from Hyperlyceum team and this is the fourth episode of the common error in Abacus and here we are going to explain the element, mesh and the content. In this episode I will cover the following content which I start with explaining the details about the element type in Abacus. Next I will give a comprehensive explanation about the contract interaction. After the introduction I will move to the Abacus software to explain these errors by example. First up is an element type and mesh in Abacus. This slide shows a 3D part that we are trying to apply the constant load at the right side and we are fixing from the left side. First step is to mesh the component. Meshing component means dividing the part into a small pieces called element. Then we apply the load and boundary condition to the part, then we can solve the problem. The size of elements varies from large to small. The right bottom figure shows an example of the model with three elements. And it will be enough for our example. So in general, we define the mesh based on the loading and boundary condition and also, of course, geometry. In this slide, you could see an example of the 2D and the 3D elements. The nodes are shown with green color and the red points shows the integration points. Integration points are to solve the FEM matrix, which are known as Gaussian points as well. These are the linear type of the elements, but we could use quadratic elements, which has more complicated shape function. It is helpful to gain more accuracy without changing the number of elements, but it affects the computational time significantly. As you might know, the minimum number of integration points is one which is available as reduced integration option in Abacus. It reduces the computational time, but it causes to lose accuracy. We will explain these in software using three different types of elements at the end of this video. Next, we will explain the interaction and contact property in this slide. For contact, the Abacus provides many procedures to simulate the model. We start with the master and slave surface. We use the following priority to define the master surface. If one part is rigid, we pick it as master. If not, we pick the one with larger surface. If both are similar, we pick the one with a stiffer material, for example, higher Young modulus. If above conditions are similar for two components, we pick the one with the larger element size. These criteria are same for try and other type of interaction. Next, we have final sliding and small sliding. They are tracking approach, which is finding the correlated node from the slave for the master surface. I don't want to go in details, but we use final sliding most of the time and also when we have an LGOM on. However, the small sliding is for simulation with a small deformation. From my experience, I found small sliding helpful for very complicated contact surfaces and helped for the convergency of the simulation. So sometimes you need to consider changing from the finite to a small sliding. Next is choosing surface to surface or node to surface type of the contact. Again, I'm not going to go to in details, but in general, it refers to algorithm which the contact has been implemented and it is better to use surface to surface contact as it provides better accuracy. You can see the difference between these two options as it is provided by Abacus documentation. The last part is to define the contact property. Contact property is essential to specify the type of contact. It can be penetration, thermal, surface contact, etc. Here we cover for normal behavior and tangential behavior. The normal behavior is helpful to define the contact which contains penetration. For example, if we are trying to simulate the moving ball in water, we need to define it. However, the hard contact option is specifically helpful for two solids that when we use the checkbox option, we can constrain them from separation. That we are going to explain it for our example to avoid convergence issue. Next is tangential behavior which we define for different types of surface contact. You can define frictionless or with friction with different strategies. Up to here I explained the details and now I want to move to the Abacus software to show how misdefining these options will lead to error. Each model is modified version of the previous one to show the progress of the modification. I have created three models to explain the common errors and if you are interested you can find the files on Hyperlyceum website link on top. I will quickly show the general feature in the model here starting with the geometry. Part 1 is a simple component that used to apply the pressure on. The second one is a rigid cylindrical component. In the property section, we use very simple material properties such as density, Young modulus, and plastic data and for the rigid body, the random value was used. 
Moving on to the assembly section, you can see the cylinder on top of the plate and there is a gap in between. The gap is ignoring next models but there is the purpose of having it here. As you might know, the existence of the gap might affect the results and defining the contact property. The step is different in each model, however, in this model it is a static general, but we will get back to it later. In interaction, we define the surface-to-surface -surface contact between the cylinder and the cubo. We can see the master and the slave surfaces here, and also the details shown in here. For example, final sliding has been selected here. For the contact properties, we define the frictionless contact to ease any complications. We avoid using normal behavior, but we will get back to it later, and we will explain why we didn't use it. For the load and boundary condition in the first model, a load is applied to the cylinder and the component is fixed. You can see we apply the boundary condition on the side of the plate. However, we will get back to it and we will change it in order to explain the problem. We skip the mesh here and we will explain it in detail for the next model. Now, let's start to explain the first model and what was the problem with it. At first, we execute the model. Here you can see the model has been aborted. If you check every module, you will notice that every part has been defined correctly and there is no problem in our model. But why we are getting this error? In previous sessions, we explained it is better to start from a very simple model and add the details step by step to get to the point that we see the error. Then we can realize where this error is coming from. But this approach might take time. However, there is another approach. Sometimes using a dynamic step could be helpful. Usually dynamic steps are better to converge compared to the static general steps. So by changing to the dynamic step, we can find a problem and then fix it. So let's move on and change the step. To facilitate the process, we can use the replace option to avoid defining the boundary condition and loads again. Let's go back to the job. And now we can execute it. You might notice the simulation might take longer time than usual. As you can see, the simulation is over and has been successful. Now let's move on to the results and see the problem. You will see that there is a problem here. It's acting odd. Let's zoom in and check it better. You can see after the contact, the cylinder jumps back. So probably there is a problem with it. We define a gap, then we apply the load to the cylinder. After the contact will jump back and the acceleration is high for a static general step to fail. To solve this problem, we have three options. One, we can constrain the component from separation as we explained in the PowerPoint, but might lead to the error in results. We can use dynamic step, but we need to check if the jumping back affects the results. The last one is removing the gap or applying the load as displacement. But you need to consider a small value of initial increment to avoid penetration of the cylinder in plate. And this was the main reason of creating the gap at the first place. The first two might create some errors in results, but it is more realistic to fix the gap which takes us to the second model. As you can see, the gap has been removed and here the load has been replaced by displacement. We already explained in the previous sessions that because of the stress strain plot, it is better to create displacement control models than the force control. Moving to a step, you can see that we define very a small initial increment time. For more information, please check our video link on top to learn more about step time and increment time. On the mesh module, I intentionally wanted to show you we define very fine element for cylinder but I will get back to it later to explain why. Now, let's move and execute the model. As you remember, because the cylinder was rigid, we should have used it as a master surface, which requires coarser element size. 
but here we use various small and fine elements. My intention was to show you what's gonna happen if you define wrong element size. You will see that the simulation will be terminated here. From my experience, it would have been better to use maximum 4 slave element for one master element, which is not the case here. Here you can see that there are many elements contacting with the plates and this causes the problem. Some elements are penetrated within the plates and also the stress distribution is not homogenized. What we need to do is to fix the problem by changing the element size. So we need to change the seed size, generate the mesh, and after these modifications, we could move to the third model. In the third model, we implemented all the modifications that were required to have a successful job. As you can see, we changed the step, displacement, and the gap. So here we are only checking the result for three different types of elements. Here I wanted to show you the accuracy of the simulation using quadratic and reduce integration options. I already created the simulation and shown the results. For all kind of elements, the model was completed successfully as the components were meshed adequately. However, there might be a difference in results because of the options we choose for element type. The first one is normal type, which doesn't have reduce integration and the linear shape function was used. The second one is reduce integration one, and the last one is quadratic element. As you might guess, the reduce takes minimum time and the quadratic takes the longest time. The normal element can predict the results very well and the critical area for the stress as it's shown with the yellow color here. The deformation is large so the elements deform significantly but you can see for the reduced integration type the difference between the critical and the normal part is not that visible. We show the accuracy is not as high as the normal one. The last one is quadratic shape function and as you can see the red region shows the area with higher stress. It explains that using this type might help to find the critical area but the results for the contact might not be as good as we are expecting. So in general I would recommend to use linear shape function with enough number of elements which is the best option for contact problems but it highly depends on the type of simulation. Okay that's it for this video. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any question, please mention it here or use our Q&A session on our website. And until the next one, bye. This video was made by Reza Tankistan. To find his contact information and his updated resume, please visit our website at hyperdc.com. Reza is an expert in Abacus, Python, Fortran, SolidWorks, and a few other engineering software. To plan an online session, discuss industrial and academic projects, please use the provided email under Reza's content. The cost of projects vary depending on the complexity of the work and can be discussed in advance. We look forward to working